Do you find yourself stuck in a blame game with a narcissist? Now, what I mean by this is you end up being blaming yourself time and time again for the abuse that you've experienced. Like this person did this to you and you're blaming yourself for what they did to you. Okay. Now it sounds crazy when I kind of phrase it that way, but that is where you're at. And it's okay. It's totally okay because a lot of times people struggle with that when they're with a toxic person, when they're with a narcissist. And at this point, you're struggling to break free from the feelings of guilt. And you're not sure what do you actually do. If you guys are new here, the reason why I'm talking about this is because I'm a narcissist. And I've played this game multiple times with people destroying and hurting other relationships. Narcissistic abuse is real. And I'm on here to try to help bring an awareness to it. So people understand what it looks like in real life and people are able to make healthy choices in their lives so they don't get with a toxic person and they can move forward into being happy, healthy, healed, whole into the version of the person that they want to be and that they're pursuing. So if you want to talk sometime, you can go to rawmotivation.com. If you're new here, hit subscribe, hit that notification. Let's dive in. So when we're talking about this aspect of breaking free from the narcissistic blame in the blame game, we normally need to look at how narcissists blame you, how it leads to you feeling shame and guilt and that blame being on you, and then how do we actually break free. Okay, so I mentioned blame game. Blame game is this aspect where the narcissist wants to put it all on you no matter what, to make you feel bad, to make you feel like it is your fault. Now, when the narcissist is putting it on you, it's actively in the thought process. It's this idea of like, if I put this on you, then I no longer have to experience it. Like if I'm wearing this jacket and I give you this jacket, I don't have to deal with the jacket anymore. Like it's gone. But the problem is the jacket is still owned by the narcissist. It still belongs to them. Same thing is going on with accountability and responsibility. The narcissist is trying to give you like their accountability, their responsibility for the things that they've done without accepting the things they've done, that accountability and responsibility, putting it off, putting it off, putting it off onto you. And you're going to see this multiple times in your own relationship when you're trying to hold him accountable for one thing. And it's like, he won't even take accountability for it. Like, and you see this play out in crazy ways. So let's say for instance, like he cheated on you and you find out on his phone and he's like, well, if you hadn't looked at my phone, then you wouldn't be upset right now. Okay, so like we switch it around. Or he's yelling at you and you're like, would you please stop yelling at me because I don't feel safe? And he's like, well, if you'd listen to me, then I'd stop yelling at you. Like there's this aspect that's twisted around multiple times with a toxic and a narcissistic person to make it be your fault. That's the whole game. That's the whole idea. Because it has to be your fault. The reason why it has to be your fault is because it can't be their fault. Okay, so as a narcissist, I would have to take the blame and put on someone else so that I didn't have to feel the impact of the guilt and the shame on me and the blame of it actually being my fault, the accountability, responsibility of the actions and things that I did. So I have to put it on you. Oftentimes we would call this projection. Like we have to put it on you so that you feel it and so I don't feel it. Okay, with this, it's just running away from accountability. Because a narcissist, as soon as they interact with something, as soon as they feel it, there's a tiny little thing that'll fire off really quick that you normally don't see, which is guilt. Okay, I did something bad. As soon as that fires off, it leads to shame because they can't process guilt in a healthy way. I am bad. This is the aspect of shame. And then from there, it's like, what do I have to do to get rid of this? Well, let me put it on someone else. Let me blame someone else. Let me project it onto someone else so I don't have to deal with it. Okay. And then you get to this place where you start to question like your own actions. Like maybe I did do something that made them do this. Maybe I did do something that, you know, promoted like this action. Okay. And then you have a narcissist that talks about your fault versus our fault. Now I've talked to a couple people about this and it normally is kind of like eye opening when they're like, yeah, that makes sense. Like he always said it was my fault. But then when I, when I actually stood up for myself and I said, no, it's not, it was more like, okay, like we both have issues. Like we're both a little toxic. Like we both struggle with communication. So give you an idea. My wife and I, we were walking down the road one time, uh, walking down uh, an area and we were looking and we saw a restaurant. And when we saw this restaurant, I was like, look, it's a Mexican restaurant. And she was like, no, it's not a Mexican restaurant. And I was like, yeah, it is. She was like, no, it's not. So like we walked up, we looked at the menu. And when we got to the menu, we saw that it indeed was not officially fully 100% a Mexican restaurant. However, I proceeded to search through the entire menu until I found the tacos. And I said, see, they got tacos. So it has to be a Mexican restaurant. And she was like, no, you can clearly see they have a lot of other things that are not Mexican at all on this. It's a combination, Tex-Mex, whatever you want to do, but it's not just a Mexican restaurant. And so we're, she was like, okay, we can like 
agree to disagree, like you're half right, I'm half right, okay? So in my mind, I'm thinking like, cool, 50-50, but then 50-50 isn't good enough, right? So I turned to her and I was like, can I just be 51% right? And she's like, who cares, like fine. And I'm like, sweet, I'm right, okay? Now, I say that as like a silly illustration. It, it's re- it is real, it did happen, it happened on a date night one time. And, and the whole idea behind it is like once a narcissist like goes over the pinnacle of like it being just a little bit more them being right and you being wrong, game over. Like they don't really care at that point. So when a, the whole, whole idea here is when a narcissist says that it's your fault and you reject it and you're like, no, it's not my fault, it's your fault. And they're like, actually, I'm sorry, like it's our fault. Like we both have issues. And you're like, oh, okay. Narcissist is like, sweet, it's still your fault. Okay. When a narcissist says your fault and they switch it to our fault, the only thing that dropped out of that was not the accountability, but was just the why. Your to our. That's it. They're still giving you the same projection, the same package, the same blame in their mind. And then you accept it when it says it's our fault, then they feel better about themselves. Okay, what this is, is just a crazy mind game that narcissists plays to feel better about themselves, to repackage the shit that they're feeling, put it on you, and then feel like, oh, they actually took it. Okay, you see like the crazy like mindset shift happen, like when a narcissist is like, let me, let me hurt and abuse you, and then you chase after me, that means, oh my gosh, you love me so much and you want me. Okay, but I just trauma bonded you to make that happen. Okay. A lot of the mind stuff like goes on. People normally call it like a mind fuck, okay? So like just understanding like this is happening a lot of times, like changing it around so it's not their fault, so it makes it your fault. They're gonna blame you for their actions and not be accountable for the stuff that they've done, okay? That's part of the blame game. Blame game also comes with and associated with gaslighting, okay? Let me distort and change your reality. So a good example, I I was talking to a client one time and she was in her kitchen with her husband, talking about a certain issue, a certain argument, and it was going on, on and on and on. And then he made a statement that was like really awful, really bad. And she was like, I can't believe you said that. And he's like, what are you talking about? I didn't even say that. I didn't even bring that up. She was like, no, you said it. So they had cameras in the kitchen because their security system went, picked up the iPad, scrolled back in the video because it activated because of the motion and played it. When she played it, it played through what he said, the exact thing he said. He looked at her and she was like, I didn't say that. But she was like, but this is you on the camera, like saying this. He was like, no, like I didn't say it. That's not, that's not right. You're hearing it wrong. So much to the point that she had to take the iPad and the video footage and take it to friends and family and play it without saying anything and then asking, what did you hear? Because she was at the point she couldn't hear what was there. She couldn't believe it because she was being gaslit and to believe that it actually didn't exist. Narcissists are a lot of times very adept at being able to change the past. In their own mind, we typically call it rewriting history. Let me take a version, like what was actually true, the truth version, and switch it into a false reality so I don't have to believe that it actually happened. Like, I hurt this person? No, like they actually betrayed me, which is why I did what I did, which was fully justified. Like, switching it around really fast to make themselves feel better. This is how they convince you that it's your fault, not them makes you feel crazy, makes you feel like you're going insane of like, what's actually real? And you start to doubt the truth because the narcissist is denying it. Like they're like switching to the victim mode of like, now it's like, oh, like you're coming after me. Like this is something that you did to me. And you're like, no, like I didn't. You're the one that did it. Like what's actually going on? So trying to get to this place of understanding the reality of gaslighting you to make you feel like it is your fault and not them. All right, so really quick, what does the blame game actually produce? It produces a ton of self-doubt. You have no clue what's going on. You have no clue who's responsible for the relationship, what's happening. You feel tons of guilt and you feel trapped because you don't think you can make a move because it's all your fault. So like, why would you get out of the relationship if it's still your fault? At this point, you might start to think and blame yourself because you can't fix the narcissist. Like You feel like you're giving up on the relationship. It makes you feel like you're a failure. Like you've never given up on anything. You're successful in business. You're successful at raising kids. You're successful doing X, Y, and Z. And now you're gonna give up on this relationship. That's the, that's the mind game that you're playing with yourself. Like I'm not able to fix it, not able to do this. Like me walking away from this marriage is me quitting. And that starts to blame you and put you down even more. Then there's aspects of like self-blame, of making you feel like it was your fault. And you start to blame yourself that it's your fault that he cheated. Like it's your fault because you could have done better. If you would have been a more loving wife, then he wouldn't have left. You start to tell yourself this. This is the degrading stuff that the narcissist puts on you that you start to internalize and start to do to yourself. 
Then you start to think, well, he wasn't this way before, so maybe I caused this behavior. Maybe it was my fault. Maybe I'm responsible for the things that he's doing now because he didn't show up that way the first time, okay? Now, if you're in this spot, if you're in any of these thoughts right now, like I want you to reach out for help. Go to escapetoxicity.com to start your journey to get free, okay? Because in a relationship like this, like you have to be able to get free mentally and emotionally, But I also want you to hear something really loud and clear. Number one is you didn't cause him to cheat on you. Like you did not hold a gun to his head and tell him, go cheat on me. That's what my, that's what my wife's therapist had to tell her to have it, have it kind of click. Like you did not force him to do this. He also didn't have to go do that because his needs weren't being met. It just shows that he was a coward in the relationship and it was unwilling to be vulnerable and truthful and work through the issues that he had in his own head. Okay. So you did not force this person to cheat on you. Number two, nothing you could have done would have saved your relationship. If you were with a narcissist, nothing you could have done would have saved it. Okay. Because number three, anything else that you would have changed, and you probably changed about 90% of who you are, your personality, your habits, your styles, all this kind of stuff. You probably changed about 90% typically. Okay. Anything you could have done more to change would have only changed the timeline. It would only prolonged or ramped up the timeline of this relationship falling apart, of this person cheating on you, of this person moving out, ghosting you, whatever, because at the end of the day, it had nothing to do with you. If you hear anything from the entire video, understand that the narcissist leaving you, the narcissist cheating on you, the narcissist hurting and abusing you had nothing to do with you and only had to do with themselves. If you need help today, please reach out. Go to escapetoxicity.com to be able to start your healing journey of breaking free. If you want to talk to me one-on-one or you'd like some more information individually, go to rawmotivations.com, click on the one-on-ones, here to help.